That was a much nicer landing. Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to my review of the Durafly Excalibur from Hobby King. Now, this guy is advertised as a 1600mm aeroplane, however, when I measured it, I measured 1570mm from wingtip to wingtip. Of course, uh, they always round off these figures, so, you know, 30 millimeters, what's 30 mil between friends, right? So, uh, this plane is equipped with a 800 kV brushless motor up the front, uh, which is spinning a 13 by 7 propeller, and that is a carbon fiber foldable propeller at that. Yeah, and uh, to make everything go, it has a 60 amp ESC. Now, you can run this on a 3S, but of course, it is preferable that you run it on a 4S 2200. And for batteries, I was using this guy right here, which is a 2200 Turnigy Heavy Duty. These are excellent batteries. It'll fit in there nice and snug, and it has a C rating of 60 to 120 C more than enough to power this thing into the moon. Let me tell you, this has an un unbelievable climb rate. Now, there is an optional propeller that you can buy for this as well, which is a 13 by eight. I haven't got it yet, but I uh, can assure you that I will be getting one in the near future. And who knows, you may see another video of this plane later on uh, with me kind of testing that propeller out. Uh, now, to access uh, your battery, you have a little twist tab on the back of the canopy here, uh, and that just pops open like so. Nice little canopy made out of plastic, pretty well reinforced, and has, uh, as I said, a little twist tab. However, I will warn you that mine uh, kind of wore out after the first couple of battery swaps, and I had to glue this uh, little cross tab into place uh, just to make sure that it wouldn't kind of stay in there as I twisted the tab because I did have trouble taking the canopy off at one point. Uh, so that's just a little mod that I did uh, to make sure that I could actually put this in and out without it um, jamming and, and getting stuck in there. Now, um, putting the plane together, extremely quick, extremely easy. Uh, there is no manuals in the box. However, there is a file tab in the um, uh, product description on the Hobby King website where you can go in there and actually see all the uh, information that you need in the manual. Uh, of course, you can download that, print it off if you really want to print it off, but uh, uh, there's no manual that comes in the box. But to be honest with you, the only thing I needed the manual for was just to see how these control horns at the back here, the VTEL, how they weigh on, because I didn't want to put them like upside down or the wrong way around. Um, so that's the only thing I really looked at the manual for, because quite honestly, it's pretty self-explanatory and uh, it goes together very, very quick. You'll probably spend more time binding and uh, setting up dual rates and all the rest of it than you will actually uh, building this thing. Very, very easy build and very quick as well. No glue required. Uh, as far as I can remember, there was no glue required for this thing. Now, uh, the airframe itself is very stiff. There's a lot of carbon fiber in these wings and there's even a, a very uh, thick square carbon fiber tube that goes all the way right to the tip of the uh, fuselage. So it it's, feels like a really solid airframe as well. Uh, now, not only do you get the plane in the box, but they also give you a couple of extra goodies. Uh, one of them being these little cones here, these little things, in case you're wondering what they're for. This is so you can go do some slope soaring. You can remove your spinner and prop at the front, slide one of these guys over the front of the uh, plane, and hey presto, you have a slope soarer with no prop. Uh, so pretty cool that they've included that. These little guys, uh, I actually had to watch the Hobby King pro profile video product profile video that they do to find out what these were for. And these are kind of like little uh, band-aids. So if you have a bit of a nose crash and your plane's looking a little bit messy at the front, you kind of stick these on, just sort of like reinforce the, uh, the fuse at the front uh, end of the plane until of course you can uh, replace the fuse if you really need to. Um, so yeah, yeah, they're cool to have. Um, pretty flimsy though, they don't really add any strength, but they are gonna patch it up and sort of help hold it together if things do go badly for you. Now, let's move on to the maiden flight because I do want to come back and talk to you about something that happened in my very first flight with this plane and how I overcame it. Uh, and there's also another thing that we'll talk about a bit later on as well before I give you my final thoughts. So I will throw over to my past self and you'll get to see the Excalibur fly for the very first time. Okay, maiden flight of the Excalibur. Let's see how we go here. <sighs> Got some grass on my uh, remote. I'm a little bit nervous, this thing has some weight to it. Um, all I've done here is I've sort of covered up the servos on the ailerons with some white tape and I put some stickers um, over the top just to dress it up a little. They don't really go with the colour scheme but I don't care, it's underneath the plane and they're kind of small. So um, 
yeah, I'm stalling. Let's just throw it in here. Jesus. Oh wow, they weren't kidding. This thing has some power. Okay, I think I need some mailer on trim. But aside from that, it's okay. Wow. Yeah, need some aileron to the le to the left. So I might give myself a little bit of height here and do some adjusting. I am on low rates, flying at about 70% uh, on or 75% rather on my rates and about 40% expo. So that's my low rates. Medium is about 85 and 40. And then high is 100 and 100% uh, rates and 40% uh, dual uh, expo. Damn, I'm a little bit nervous. Coming in for a bit of a low pass here. Very quiet, very nice. Still wants aileron to the left. All right, so let's see what this thing can do. Let's open her up. Roll. Wow, on low rates, it rolls like that. That is pretty cool. Here we go. Wow, that sounds insane. I'm sorry, there's machinery in the background. You probably can't hear it very well, but that sounds really, really good when it whistles past. Like I said, I've seen a few videos of this online and it always sounds good. Here we go, throttle off pass. Wow, that is amazing. It has a bit of weight to it, so when you do throttle off, it still has so much energy that it actually whizzes past at a very, very good speed. It doesn't slow down that much at all. Very streamlined, weighty plane, so... Wow, <laughs> that is mental. All right, straight up. Wow. Even at a distance, it sounds good. I've still got my throttle off here. So, into the wind. This is going to be a, this is going to be a prick to land. Thankfully, the wind is picking up. It should hopefully slow it down. Throttle off here. Just letting the plane sink a little. I do have to push down to really make it come down low. Wow, that is carrying so much energy. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. It really does fly extremely well. Very, very cool. All right, throttle. And you can see it wants to climb under throttle. But man, does it sound good with the throttle off. You could do that all day long. Wow. Uh-oh. My throttle is not working now. That's interesting. Why is my throttle not working? Coming in for landing. There's a bit of energy there, but uh, I tried to throttle it, it wouldn't throttle on. Don't know what's happened. Hopefully none of my wires have gotten stuck on my battery. Oh, now it's, now it's on. That was interesting. It wouldn't throttle on for a second then when I was uh, trying to keep it in the air. So as you saw, I had a little bit of an issue there towards the end of the maiden flight where the prop wouldn't spin. And I couldn't quite figure out what was going on until about a flight or two later where I landed the plane with the prop jammed. And where it was jammed was actually under the canopy. So as I cut throttle, the prop folds back. And as you give throttle, depending on where the prop stops, it would actually slide up a little bit and get itself stuck underneath the canopy. So once it was stuck under there, I don't have reverse on the motor. So uh, yeah, I have to land dead stick. There's no way that I can really save it. Um, so I started thinking of ways that I could uh, fix this, uh, this uh, issue. 
And I actually ended up talking to my buddy Paul, uh, who's over in Tasmania, and he said, oh, that's an easy fix. Just put a, an elastic band over your canopy, you know, right, over your fuse, and uh, that should stop the prop from going into the canopy anymore. True that, and a very quick and easy fix, and very cheap fix at that, but I didn't like it. The reason was because it kind of takes away from the look of the plane, and uh, having to take the elastic band on, off, and put it on every time you want to change batteries, I, I could see that being really annoying, and uh, of course, you know, with all the sliding of the elastic band, it will probably get damaged and then get snagged on the ground when you're coming into land. It just wasn't going to work for me. I wanted something that was neater. I wanted something that was going to be cleaner and perhaps even permanent. So what I ended up doing is putting a blob of epoxy on this side of the fuselage because obviously the prop's going to spin up this way. And that gave me a leap that uh, basically allowed the prop to kind of hit that lip and go over the edge of the canopy. And that's something that I think Hobby King or Durafly kind of need to implement into their design when they're uh, next kind of updating this plane. Uh, just a little lip around the uh, edges of the uh, canopy there on, on the front of the nose, just so that the prop, when the prop goes to spin, it doesn't spin into the canopy and, uh, and get stuck under there like it happened to me. Now, uh, there could be a hundred other owners of the Excalibur out there saying that they've never had that problem. But of course, I've had it and that means somebody else has had it as well. And uh, I think that that's a, a precaution well worth uh, looking into. Just creating a little lip on either side of the canopy, obviously to make it look even and symmetrical. And that would stop the propeller from sliding underneath. Uh, that's really the only complaint I have as far as design. Now, we're gonna go and have a look at another flight, this time in high winds, because I went out one day and, uh, well, it was really windy, and I figured, hey, I'll, take, I'll do some uh, footage of this guy in the air, see how it handles the wind, because I don't do any slope soaring, so I can't really show you any of that. But um, I figured I can give you something close enough, and, uh, well, hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, wow, it's really very windy, maybe too windy, I wonder. This is really risky. Here we go. She's up. Wow, the wind really takes it, takes it away. Let's see how slow we can really go here. Throttle off. Wow, it's really getting kicked around. This is gonna be interesting to land. A little bit of throttle here. Wow, it really picks up some speed with the wind. And then you bank it across. Try and bring it down a bit lower here. Gets thrown around quite a fair bit. Still has a lot of pace. It is very, very windy. This is uh, probably a really cool idea to really test out this airframe, or a really stupid idea if this ends up being a crash, which I'll probably cry because I absolutely love this plane. So still carrying a lot of airspeed. Whoa. All right, maybe it's too windy. I'm gonna see if I can bring her in, see if I can salvage this plane before things get bad. Almost feels like it's flying backwards up there. Slowing right down here. Whoa, big gust of wind. Big gust of wind. Throttle off. And that is, without a doubt, the softest landing I think I've ever done with this plane. So now that you see me fly it on a calm day as well as some windy conditions, it's time for me to give you my overall thoughts on the Durafly Excalibur. And what a fitting name it has, because you can carve up the sky all day long with just two or three batteries. Uh, believe it or not, I was getting anywhere between 10 to 15 minute fly times with this plane, uh, just because I wasn't using the throttle all the time. Just taking it up high enough and letting it glide all the way down. I was, uh, you know, at one point my head and my back was hurting because I was uh, standing in the same positions for so long flying the, the, the plane on the same battery. Uh, and it's just a pleasure to fly. You can do loops, rolls, you can come by with fast passes, cut the throttle at a distance and let it whistle past. It's just so much fun to fly this plane. And uh, it's a joy to own as well because it went together so quickly and effortlessly. Um, 
and it, it's got a very rigid airframe. Uh, it's just fun to fly this airplane and, and it's definitely one of my favorites. It's absolutely beautiful. The only thing that I have to say kind of lets it down a little bit is that it doesn't have flaps. It doesn't have a, a means to slow it down. This plane is so aerodynamic and when you're coming in for landings, it carries with it so much energy that you need to have a fairly long approach or you need a fairly long runway for when you touch down because it will skid along the ground for quite some time or it will float for quite a long time before it actually touches the ground. Now there is a way that you can overcome this and uh, what I've done to kind of fix this problem or at least help remedy the problem a little bit is I've separated the connections from my aileron. So I've put each aileron in its own channel. This allows me to kind of program the ailerons to either flapperons or I think what it's called camber where the ailerons go up. Uh, now I will show you a video at the end of this so you can actually see the plane flying on 4S and then at the end of that you'll see uh, a landing with me uh, coming in with camber. But in the video you'll hear me call it crow. I think crow is when you have one going up and the other one going down. Um, I think camber is just when the ailerons are going up. Correct me in the comments if I've got the terminology wrong. Um, I do apologize if that's the case. Now. I did try flapperons. My first uh, landing when I reprogrammed my ailerons, I had them facing down just like you would flaps. However, I found the plane to be a little bit floaty. It did slow down, but it was just a bit floaty, especially when you touch down. It was kind of skip along the ground a little bit, kind of like skipping stones at a lake, if you remember doing that. Um, so I didn't like that too much. I wanted the plane to kind of touch down and stay down. So when I uh, landed it with camber, it worked a lot better because the way that the plane flies, when it's flying, it's flying straight like so. You kick in camber and the plane will uh, lift the nose, dip the tail and flies a little bit like that. Uh, and because you've got your ailerons kind of up like so, once it touches down, it's a little bit like a suction cap. It'll just, it'll kind of stick and it won't skid for very long at all. So I kind of like that setting better. Not only does it slow the plane down, but when it touches down, once it touches down, it stays down. Um, so that's my recommendation to kind of come in for landings if you're in a bit of a tight spot or you're not exactly sure, you know, how to uh, kind of manipulate the plane and, and bank it hard to, to land it at a, at a shorter distance because this will float for days. Um, so that's the only thing. I wish it had some sort of flaps or something to slow it down from factory, but uh, you can modify the, uh, the ailerons and you can st still have similar results and really slow this guy down. So an absolutely brilliant plane. I love it. Uh, it's probably one of my most favorite airplanes. Rigid airframe, easy to put together, easy to fly, and just a pleasure to fly as well. Uh, so that is it for this review. Uh, please be sure to check out the video description for more information on the Excalibur, and I'll have a link in there to my Facebook page as well, and I may even put a link in there to the batteries in case you wanna get some yourself. Uh, that is it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will speak to you next time. So, one of the things that I love about this plane is the sound that it makes. And now that I've gotten used to flying it, it's a fairly calm morning, I figured I'd show you just how nice it sounds. So we're gonna go up here. Seven minutes. Nice and high. We're gonna roll, cut the throttle, and let it come down. <laughs> that sounds unreal. I know I've probably said that a lot, but honestly, it is amazing. So let me see if I can do it again. Go up, nice and high. Roll. And back down again as it picks up speed. Beautiful, beautiful plane to fly. Doesn't like going inverted too much because it needs a lot of up elevator when it goes inverted, which is interesting. So we're gonna go again, roll.
throttle off. Let in a dive. I mean, I could be out here for close to 10 minutes flying this thing, just dive bombing it. But essentially, essentially that's what this plane does best. Climb, roll, back down. Sounds like a missile. Quite outstanding, this plane. Quite outstanding. All right, let's see if we can bring him in for a landing. So I'm gonna slow it down here. I'm gonna come in land towards us. So we're gonna go around here, nice and slow. I'm gonna cut throttle right there. And hopefully land this without too many issues. Here it comes. Nice. Caught the wing a little bit, but it landed very well. Okay, demonstrating crow on the Excalibur. Here it is there. Let's see how we go. Takes off so easy this thing. So the whole idea with this is obviously to uh, slow it down and bring it into land at a reasonable pace. I'm going to flick it over to high rates. Man, this thing is quick. There's so much torque in this plane. Nice big open loop. Beautiful. A little bit of a roll. And let her come on in with that whistle. <laughs> Five minutes. I can't get over that. Never get old. That will never get old. All right, let's try it one more time. It's gonna go up real high here. Really pick up some speed. We're gonna roll it over and drop it back down. That whistle, cannot get over that whistle. All right, let's see if we can land it. So I'm only cruising at quarter throttle here. All right, cut throttle, full crow, and we're gonna swing it around into the wind, let it drop nice, and you'll see the tail's dragging a little bit, and there we go. So not too bad with this setup. I like it, because once it touches down, it just sticks to the ground. So very, very cool. Give it a go on your Excalibur or any other plane that you have that doesn't have flaps and you have a bit of trouble um, getting it to, to, to land at a reasonable distance. This definitely helps. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.